This 310-ton experimental warship has just joined the American Navy. It must be the most unconventional fighting ship in the world. In the late 1960s, the U.S. Navy faced a critical challenge from the powerful Russian nuclear submarines lurking beneath the waves. The Navy knew they needed a vessel to outmaneuver and outpace them. And so, in the spring of 1969, the Navy unveiled its latest weapon in the fight against the Russians, a revolutionary hydrofoil that could soar above the water at unprecedented speeds. Unlike any ship before it, this advanced vessel defied gravity, lifting itself out of the water to travel at breakneck speeds. Pretty cool, right? To understand why the Navy needed such a revolutionary vessel, we need to go back in time, 60 years ago. During the 1960s, the U.S. Navy was the most powerful and capable force in the world, ready to project its power to any corner of the planet. However, military planners started growing increasingly concerned about a new threat from the Soviet Union that would require a new type of ship to counter. The threat was the Soviet Union's nuclear-powered submarines, which were becoming faster, more capable, and being built in larger numbers. The latest generation under development was projected to reach a stunning 41 knots fully submerged, allowing them to hunt down any ship in the U.S. fleet, even outrun torpedoes. They were also able to dive to record depths, making them almost impossible to intercept. With these new submarines, the Soviets could shadow American carrier groups anywhere in the world and launch a devastating strike at a moment's notice. While destroyers and frigates could detect the incoming subs using sophisticated sonar, they had no way of closing the distance to engage them. The Navy realized it needed much faster ships, ones that could outrun the Soviet submarines and engage them in combat. But where would they turn to find the technology they needed? Surprisingly, they looked back 50 years to the idea of a ship that could fly. In 1906, an Italian engineer made a significant breakthrough in the marine industry by inventing the hydrofoil, a boat that could lift itself out of the water using foils or underwater wings to achieve unprecedented speeds. This technology significantly reduced drag, allowing hydrofoils to move through water with ease, making them an essential innovation in marine transportation. Alexander Graham Bell, the famous inventor, later improved on the design and broke the world record for marine speed. In the following decades, commercial hydrofoils were introduced, revolutionizing the marine industry. However, the hydrofoil's full potential was yet to be realized, and the U.S. Navy was initially skeptical of its capabilities. Hydrofoils were typically used in calmer waters due to their design, which made them susceptible to waves. Hydrofoils would skim close to the surface, making them stable but easily affected by waves, limiting their usefulness in rough seas. The Navy realized that hydrofoils could be the answer to the becoming more powerful Soviet submarine threats. It could offer a solution by providing high speed and the ability to operate in any condition, making them ideal for anti-submarine warfare. However, the hydrofoil design had a significant challenge. It was not dynamically stable. It was not until the 1960s that the necessary technologies for ocean-going hydrofoils came into existence, and the U.S. Navy began to explore the technology's potential. By 1970, the Navy had four prototype hydrofoils under evaluation, with the largest being the 320-ton Plainview, at the time, the world's largest. Conceptual designs for even larger ships, ranging up to 2,500 tons, were on the drawing board, and these destroyer escort-sized hydrofoils could even be equipped with helicopters. However, before any of these designs could be built, each of the Navy's prototype ships would need to be tested to evaluate various foil configurations and propulsion systems. Hydrofoils are high-speed ships that are expected to navigate the open ocean, braving severe storms and other challenging conditions. These vessels are equipped with the latest armament, including guns that can be operated while moving at high speed, torpedoes that can be launched, and anti-ship and anti-aircraft missiles that can be fired. One of the most impressive hydrofoils was Plainview, which was powered by a pair of 600-horsepower diesel engines that allowed it to operate at hull-borne speeds. However, when it needed to go faster, the ship's crew would lower the foils and activate a pair of 14,000-horsepower gas turbines, which were the same engines used on fighter jets. 
With this setup, Plainview could fly at over 50 knots, and it was designed to be upgraded with an additional set of jet engines and a super-cavitating foil system that would enable it to reach speeds of up to 90 knots. Plainview's foils were connected to an automatic control system that functioned like an autopilot on an aircraft. This system continually adjusted the angle of attack to maintain level flight, using readings from a sonic height sensor, accelerometer, and set of gyros. This allowed Plainview to maintain high speeds even in 10-foot waves, making it an impressive and reliable ship. However, the development of Plainview and other experimental hydrofoils proved to be a gigantic challenge. The Navy issued requirements for Plainview in 1960, and Grumman won the bid for design in 1961. Two years later, the project was transferred to Lockheed for construction. A series of strikes at Lockheed shipyards delayed the program, which meant that Plainview did not make its first high-speed test run until March of 1968. Additionally, the ship was plagued with deficiencies that should have been addressed at an earlier stage. By 1969, Plainview was already three years behind schedule and 100% over budget. The Navy decided to take matters into their own hands and accept the unfinished ship to try to work out the issues themselves. However, each of the Navy's four prototype ships was a one-of-a-kind experimental design, which meant that development resources had to be stretched across all four, further slowing progress. In May of 1974, Plainview was sent to dry dock for a major two-year overhaul. After the overhaul, Plainview was a better ship, more capable out at sea and much more reliable. However, some in the Navy had grown impatient with the ship's protracted development. Despite the many advantages of hydrofoils, there were also some critical drawbacks that hindered their widespread adoption by the Navy. For one, hydrofoils were weight-critical vessels that required aluminium hulls, which were not as strong or cost-effective to build as traditional steel hulls. This weight limitation meant that hydrofoils would be less armored and carry fewer weapons, which could affect their combat potential. Additionally, the complex foils and dual propulsion systems of hydrofoils made them less dependable and more maintenance-heavy, which would consume a greater share of the Navy's budget. Another challenge facing hydrofoils was their viability in anti-submarine warfare. By the mid-1970s, the Navy had made significant progress in using aircraft to track and hunt down submarines, which proved to be more effective and economical than hydrofoils. As a result, the case for large ocean-going hydrofoils like Plainview no longer seemed as compelling as it once was. Despite these challenges, the Navy continued to pursue hydrofoil technology and eventually put a hydrofoil into production after more than a decade of research and development. The Pegasus class, which was significantly smaller than Plainview, was designed for coastal patrol on smaller seas like the Baltic. Although there were plans to build 44 ships, only six entered service with the U.S. Navy, and they were retired after just 10 years due to high operating costs and lack of a useful mission. In 1978, the Navy's budget for experimental hydrofoil development was suddenly cut from $2.2 million a year to zero, sinking any prospects for further hydrofoil development. This decision marked the end of an era for hydrofoil technology, which had once been hailed as a radical departure that blurred the lines between naval and aviation. Until our next story. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing stories.